Across the developing world, the face of agriculture is changing rapidly. Farming has always been women's work, but now more and more small farms are being run by women because men are caught up in regional conflicts, are disabled or killed by HIV AIDS, or have migrated to cities. Today, women grow around 80% of the food eaten by poor families, but they still have much less access than men to knowledge, technology, credit and land. And they lack access to aid. Women receive less than 10 cents in every dollar spent on agricultural assistance. In the World Bank, we have set ourselves a goal of ensuring that within the next two years, at least 50% of our operations have gender focused components in them. Uh, only a few years ago, we, this was less than 10%. We are now at uh, roughly about 35% of all operations, and we want to make sure that uh, we increase this to 50% in the short term. Simply redistributing existing resources more equally between men and women farmers could increase crop yields by up to 20%. In Kenya, if women farmers had the same access as men to seeds, fertilizers, technology and education, crop yields would increase substantially and gross domestic product could double. What's more, crop yields and farm incomes increase even further when women are involved in the design of new development ideas and new technologies. And when women earn more income and control a family spending, their children are healthier. Eradication of hunger and rural poverty simply cannot be achieved without equal opportunities for men and women and without women's economic empowerment. Thirty years of development have eased women's burden a little, but women farmers still work on average 16 hours a day, far more than men. Fetching fuel, wood and water can take women up to 2,000 hours each year. Yet women rarely have access to donkeys, wheelbarrows or carts that could ease this burden. To achieve real change in rural areas, we must recognize that smallholder farming is increasingly women's business. At IFAD we have seen how income generating activities, microfinance directed towards women, very often organizing in groups like self-help groups, can produce virtual miracles. The market alone will not drive all of the needed changes. The development community must invest in women at every level of decision-making. That way, decisions about policy, technologies and resources will include the views of those who do the majority of the work. We have the evidence. We know what needs to change. The only remaining challenge is political commitment. <laughs>